Hello, this is Kyle Hebert. I voice Gohan, the adult version, uh, currently on Dragon Ball Super. Hey, I'm Patrick Seitz, and I voice Jiren in Dragon Ball Super. I guess the, the first question uh, that I would have, sort of right out of the gate, is how long have you been working on this franchise now? And uh, as, as sort of a juxtaposition to that in general question, what makes Super different from everything that's come before it? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've been a part of the Dragon Ball franchise for 19 years. Oh. I went in in 2000 and tried out as adult Gohan. And uh, actually at the time, I guess he was a teenager, still in high school. But, uh, but so were you, right? Uh, yeah, it feels like it. Yes, <laughs> yes. This wasn't as gray. And maybe just a little more hair. The immediate difference is Gohan's uh, participation level. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, uh, he was a lot more active during Z, and now he's um, not as much. <laughs> but when he helps, he really does help. You know, he, he, he does carry his worth. What was it like to get involved in a series of this magnitude? I mean, did you have any prior knowledge or just just like, hey, I know that's a big thing? I had a little bit of knowledge. I did some of the uh, script adaptation for Kai. So I had that experience with it and having read uh, the manga for it also to get myself up to speed. Right. Uh, coming into Super was great because I never have any expectation, period, but especially as an out-of-towner and someone's not local to Texas, I realized that it's just an extra pain in the butt to use me on stuff. But on, on the other hand, I always thought, but I can yell real good. You know I can yell real good. Show full of big beefy guys. You know where to find me for me. So, um, you know, when, when Sab was like, hey, buddy, I got this part. Would you do this thing? I was like, yeah, yeah. I get to, I get to go to, I get to go to the chocolate factory. Excellent. Um, <laughs> no, it was, it was an honor mixed with the pressure of, oh man, I gotta just jump right on this carousel and then just get up to, up to speed and up to snuff right away. So you gotta tell me, with as long as Dragon Ball's been going, how has Gohan changed over the years? Well, um, he has definitely become a family man. He got married. He has a has a has a baby now, and he's you know he's domesticated. But he's he's showing off a facet to these Dragon Ball characters you're not normally a, adjusted to seeing. Like Goku, he's a loving father, <laughs> but he's like uh, I gotta go save the Earth. <laughs> So meanwhile, Piccolo steps in. And... <laughs> Active parenting. That's right. That is so true. Um, so yeah, you know, like you take the good with the bad. It's like, do I want Gohan to be in the fight all the time? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I can see that he's also gotta gotta wear that responsibility badge. Mm -hmm. You know, he's mm -hmm. gotta say, all right, Fidel, I'm going to be a, a loving husband. I'm going to be a present husband yes. and a present father. <laughs> And I'm gonna help shape and mold our child the way life should go, instead of like, sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> this is one of the most common things I get uh, from fans at conventions. They'll come up and say, what do you think about Gohan? It's like, I love the guy. I, I just wanna see him utilized more. Yeah, yeah. You mean, why wouldn't you? Because this guy who's, who's showcased so much power in the past, when he was a little bit younger, and obviously when he was like a, 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 a tween with, with Cell and all that. It's like, this guy is scary good. Yeah, and he could he could probably be the, the, the turnkey in any major battle. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool to see him, it's like, hey guys, I'm still here! You know, uh, with the whole Tournament of Power stuff. It's like, uh, really, really cool. Uh, it's like, oh, I remember what this is like. I get to <laughs> scream a lot. I get to, Ugh! Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, yeah, seeing Gohan change, go through the, and even even backtrack a little bit, you know, there's a, there's a couple episodes where you see the whole great Saiyan man thing again, mm -hmm. which is one of my personal favorite ways to portray Gohan. He's not only strong, he's not only pure, good, and naive, and, and, and innocent, and, and powerful, but he's also a total dork. Complete dweeb. <laughs> and I love, I love that, that, that side to him. And, you know, I can just put on that, oh yes, I'm a superhero. So your character, Jiren, mm -hmm. is like amazing. It's cool, uh, big over the top and stuff. But what, what are your reasons for like, uh, what, what do you really think about the character's motivation, his, his background, all that cool stuff? He's got 
He's got the tragic backstory, which I am a sucker for as a as a consumer. Here's a dude that wasn't strong enough. He just wasn't strong enough to stop everyone from getting killed. And then later, he had friends. He's like, oh, friendship. Yeah, this is cool. Friendship. Who doesn't like friendship? This will help. Oh, wait, they're not going to step up? Cool. Doubly betrayed. Yeah. Not strong enough, and people suck. <laughs> so <laughs> he doesn't lead with it when he comes onto the scene, but I, I very much appreciate that, you know, even though it isn't obvious in every single thing that he's doing, especially when he's just whooping ass with, with such ease early on, Here's a dude that's basically wounded. I mean, he got burned real bad by life to the point where when Goku was stepping on me like, I'm gonna find that extra bit of reserve because of friendship, he's like, whoa, 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 you and your friendship can take a walk. It really is a red flag for him. It kind of sets him off. Right. Because he's he's like, no, strength, strength is justice. Strength is what it is. It's, it's objective, you can measure it. Someone is strongest. This friendship thing, this ephemera, like, no, this isn't gonna get you anywhere. It's gonna get you killed. So you've got this intense battle, right? With, with Jiren and, and the, the, the whole gang. Do you think that Jiren really has what it takes? It's weird. I think, I think if it comes down to pure physicality, he might be stronger, but he's so, lacking on that 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 reserve of like what I can draw from friendship and what I can draw from the people that depend on me. Mm -hmm. I think that that's that extra little, that little bit of X factor that, that gets Goku and gang across the finish line ultimately. But I think if it were just numbers, just objective strength, Jiren might be stronger. But it's a weird thing because what is what is strength? Is strength just like what your muscles can do or is it that extra little bit of what you can force yourself to do when you go beyond what you should physically be able to do? I think physically he might be, but when you take the whole sort of holistic package of what makes strength, he's lopsided. He's definitely lopsided because he's he's basically tied one arm behind his back. Yeah. You know, in, in regards to the whole like friendship thing. Lack of training, or do you think he's he's pretty disciplined and dedicated? He's disciplined and dedicated, but so much so that he's got blinders on. Mm, okay. You know, it's it's I'm going to do this one thing. This is my watchword. This is what I. This is the one you know sort of coin of the realm for me. Right. It's just strength. Strength is this. Strength is that. Strength is just. Strength is everything. Um, which is great, but not always true or applicable. And I think in this case, he ends up uh, uh, hobbling himself. All right, so I, I've heard a, a, a term bandied about for like, where you get all these actors uh, who have to scream a lot. We call it the Hall of Pain. <laughs> Do you feel like you've entered this hall uh, and now can stand among the, the fellow champions who whose vocal cords have been shredded thusly <laughs> and you gargle with razor blades and all that? Uh, has it been everything you thought it would be? It's everything I thought it would be. It, it got to the yelling a little more gradually than I thought it would be. I didn't realize he would come in so strong that there was really no reason to have to exert my voice, you know, right out of the gate. But I'm just glad that I've been able to hold up and do the thing. Because for years, I've told, I've gotten to that point where I tell the young people, like, back in the day, there were these vocal Vikings that, that you know, tamed the dark shores of dubbing, and they were called the Dragon Ball cast. You know, some people are like, vocal stress, I've got vocal stress. I'm like, they yelled for days, days. <laughs> you know, I've become that guy where it wasn't my thing, but I use it as an example. Like, yes. that's how it was. They were strong and they yelled until they died. <laughs> so, a little hyperbolic. <laughs> but I'm glad when the chance finally came up for me to live up to my words and put my money where my mouth is or put my mouth where my voice is or my voice where my, voice, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to hang. It's been as easy as an, of an unreasonably screamy process as it possibly could be. Okay. And it's fun because you know when you you know when you get that nine second power up scream right and it hits the animation and it looks cool and it sounds cool like you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go up there and shot put a small car <laughs> in my real life. I won't, but I feel like I could. It's, it's cool. It's it's a uh, it's it's a neat moment when it all clicks. Now you've got the lower end going, but I noticed when I was doing Gohan screams, sometimes maybe I'd blow a take by by ah, you know break like suddenly he's going through puberty again. Mm -hmm. it's like, does that ever happen to you in the booth? There were a couple where it's like power up, power up, power up, where they just build on each other as far as size and pitch. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a matter of like, okay, where do we put it initially that by the end of it. 
I don't just sound like I'm screeching. Yeah. And we had a couple of those where Jiren was, was getting the, the business end of the stick, so to speak, and we had to do it a couple times to find where on that tightrope is that exact mark of like, okay, he's losing, he's definitely taking the pain, but he still sounds tough. Because one wasn't enough, one was too, you know, you Goldilocks, you're like, okay, that was too cold, that was too hot, that's the one. Yeah. So a, a, a bit of that, mostly just more so than the pitch thing, mm -hmm. knowing like, okay, intensity-wise, is he doing two in a row, is he doing three in a row? Because it gets, it gets, it gets ridiculous. Like, yeah. when once once he finally has to fight, he's mad about it. He, he rolls out a lot of power up. <laughs> <laughs> but it never goes power metal high, like, ah! <laughs> No, I did, I did one, and we were all like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the one. I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm gonna do one more right. Don't do that. I feel like this next question I have for you is, is particularly relevant in today's gig economy, uh, where we all have to multitask. But if yep. you were Gohan, yep. how would you how would you prioritize and multitask? Your scholar, your dad, your fighter. How do you do all the things? How do you juggle? Mm. And it is a juggling act. That, that is apropos a term there. It's like I would I would say uh, a sense of family is obviously a priority, <laughs> but you also have to be good at your job. Uh, so if he's if, uh, if there is an income to be gained from his scholarly uh, endeavors, then uh, yeah, you gotta keep keep those uh, well well tuned and everything. But you also gotta stay in the fight too. So um, I don't know, maybe maybe a little bit more forthcoming in the uh, in the in the fighting aspect of it. Uh, maybe let the scholarly stuff take a take a back pedal there. Because I think that I think the fights. I honestly believe that Gohan is so powerful and that. He's either holding back or hasn't been given that right opportunity to really show off what he can do. Mm -hmm. That these fights would probably be half as long. I would just go out there on that on that ledge and say, "All right, I think he's that valuable. I think he could he could be that uh, determining factor. And if not, then certainly it would help turn the tide of the battle for, uh, for sure." But um, meanwhile, you know, Videl is no slouch. The home is good. The home is in good shape. And, uh, you know, I believe his sense of uh, his paternal instinct and everything is, is going to be, you know, a fire that is definitely behind the fighting and the strength and the meaning behind it all. It's like, okay, not only are we a team and we're working together for the greater good of the universe, but it's like, I want my family to survive too. <laughs> All right, so I've been on the convention scene for almost as long as I've been doing uh, this this awesome thing that is voiceover and screaming for a living and dying for a living and all these fun things. Um, and you meet a lot of very cool and interesting, diverse people uh, amongst the, the fandom community and on the convention scene and social media and whatnot. Do you have any interesting stories uh, meeting people that are, are, are those fervent, uh, those intense Dragon Ball fans? Oh, man, I've got... I feel like there are going to be more and more of those moving forward. I've gotten a couple so far, a couple of like the super fans who are on it every week and like, you're cheering, that's totally cool. I feel like it'll probably take a little more time to sort of pollinate completely and people be like, oh, cool. that was you, that was you, they did the thing. But the people that have been excited have been very excited. Like no one's, no one's come through the line and been like, you're Jiren, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, there's, yeah. there's been no middle of the road. They either, that either hasn't been the specific thing they come through for. They're like, you are him, and he's amazing and so strong. So, the, <laughs> the, the specific, like, con goer response to me voicing Jiren has been uh, concentrated, shall we say. Yeah. You know, it's not been wide ranging, but man, when people are about that, they are about that. And I'm sure, I mean, to bounce it back to you, yeah. I'm sure you found it over the years when people are about Dragon Ball, like, they are like, got tattoos, named their kids Gohan, like they are about Dragon Ball, right? And the fans will always know more than the actors. Oh yeah. Always oh, yeah. know more. And it's like, what do you think about the power level? Like, I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> no, no math. I, can't, I didn't study. So who do I make this out to? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so true. I mean, uh, yeah, people from, from different walks of life or anything will come and tell you what Dragon Ball means to them. You know, it's cool to see that. Do you, do you get a lot of people telling you their own personal stories and maybe how Jiren has 
inspired them in some way or anything, or you think that's to come in the future? You know? I think it's to come, but I feel like a lot of people just generally speaking about about Dragon Ball. I mean, it's 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 a show about getting better and getting stronger and doing what you couldn't do last season or last episode or last life if you got brought back. So I. I think that theme of like, hey, you are in charge. The range of the improvements that you can make to yourself if you just buckle down and put in the time and put in the work, yeah. that's a really attractive theme mm -hmm. to everybody. I mean, everybody wants to feel like, hey, if I put in the time and do the work, I'm going to get better at things. I think the vast majority of the time, no matter what it is we're talking about, you will get better. Like you might type out at some certain point, but you're gonna be way better at the thing than you were before. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, I think that's a, I think people would call it a power fantasy, but it's not, it's a reality. It's just a reality that's sort of played out against this larger, more elaborate scrim of Dragon Ball. But mm -hmm. that basic theme of, you're weak, you want to get stronger, you want to get better at the thing, go work on the thing, do the thing, put on the weights, go in the hyperbolic chamber. Like, everyone can get behind that. Right. Which is really cool. And it's not just like saying, oh, entertainment is just something to pacify. You know, it's like, kids come home from school, I'm done with my homework, now can I watch TV or, mm -hmm. or whatnot? Because now we're like on demand, you know, people yeah, yeah. can watch whenever they want or can. It's just almost a, a different beast altogether, right? There are a lot of people out there that are super strong, physically and mentally, because Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, it's like entertainment, it's like therapy, really. It's yeah. like, it's... You know, it may pull them out of a, a, a slump or whatnot. I, I've certainly heard stories of that from fans who saying like, hey, I was really, really depressed. I was in a funk and watching your character or this show or play this game or whatnot has really turned things around for me. And yeah, yeah. like, that's the real icing on the cake. Yeah. It's like, not only do I make the fans proud from a franchise standpoint, but if I can affect them personally too, right? So I'm gonna ask you a question mm -hmm. that could be answered with a simple and emphatic yes, but I feel like you will bring more to it <laughs> than just a simple and emphatic yes. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball as a franchise. Yeah. Important and iconic to anime as a whole? It is uh, definitely, let's start with the emphatic yes! <laughs> goats, my goats! Uh, yeah, it's it's one of those those uh, gateway properties. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't watch that type of stuff. Like, really? Well, I got the perfect show for you. Yes, try this, try this. And it's like, oh, suddenly they're obsessed and have to watch every episode uh -huh. and, and and buy all the merch. And then, uh, one of us, one of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 absolutely important to to see people that have a, a great misunderstanding of the genre, of the art form that anime is and, and the amazing storytelling capabilities that these artists and creators have done for many decades and their misunderstanding equates to fear, equates to maybe judgment. Uh, but now that it is cool to be a geek, cool to be a nerd, people that may not have embraced it so much back, you know, in the 90s or the early 2000s or whatnot are suddenly just like they're proud. They're wearing these things very proudly and it's like transformative. So yeah, I think Dragon Ball is absolutely instrumental in, in seeing that change in pop culture. It's really cool when you've got these properties that endure so long and still find a home. Yeah. Because you could look at a lot of stuff from 20 years ago, like an old movie and old this and old that, and you're like, it hasn't, it hasn't held up. Things are different. The, 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 the way it was approaching its themes or the themes themselves don't resonate with people now. But then you've got something like Dragon Ball, which is sort of this evergreen franchise. Yeah. It still does its job and people still love it. Like you said, that, that becomes the, the, the sort of the, the entry and the gateway for a lot of people into the wider genre. Mm -hmm. You look at shows like that, you look at a franchise like that or a manga like that or whatever, and you're like, what is it that you are doing that is so rare but is so effective? You know what I mean? You And you really can't even fully put your finger on it and bottle it, because if you could, people would do it for everything. You just sort of sit there and you're True. like, there's something really special here, and I can't pin it to a cork board, so to speak, but mm -hmm. I recognize that it's there, and wow, that's that's pretty cool. I can guess that, that something that might have to do with it is just such a cohesive world-building mm -hmm. element to it, mm -hmm. uh, and those basic themes that uh, no matter what social climate we may be in, these will always be constants. Positivity, 
make yourself better, self-improvement, uh, mentally or physically or whatnot, and these characters and their stories, the wackiness, the seriousness, the emotion and all that stuff are, are such an important driving force behind it that, uh, yeah, it'll stand the test of time. So hey guys, thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, again, I'm Patrick Seitz, I'm hanging out with yeah Kyle Abear. We'll catch you next time on Dragon Ball Super. Oh damn. <laughs> <laughs>